are. This is wonderful, and this is what we need to see. Um, what's the ticker? How many days did you say are left before the election? Uh, that frightens me. But I'm going to talk about Mitt in a little while, too, because uh, they asked me to talk about him um, as well. I'm very, I've gotten to be very close with Mitt and Ann Romney, so I want to speak about him a little bit. But first, keep in your prayers. Um, as you all know, we had a law enforcement officer killed yesterday, Officer St. Laurent. He left behind a wife, four adult children, and grandchildren. So, um, he, you know, he was just working in, in, and this has nothing to do with President Obama. It could have been anyone's motorcade. He was working in, in the motorcade when the president was here and was struck and killed by a truck. So, um, so please keep, uh, please keep him in, in, in your prayers. Um, I think the whole country is in mourning over that. So that's very, very sad. And, and you know, police officers, best, I think the sheriff left, but um, I wanted to say we've got to get that sheriff elected as well as all of these great um, Republicans here tonight. Um, but, um, but please keep Officer St. Laurent's family in your prayers. And again, as September 11th is a um, very tragic day for all of us. One of my dear friends lost her husband in the second tower. And um, so people, you know, 11 years later, she's now happily remarried with three children and still cries constantly about it. So um, that's why we need a strong military and that's why we need a strong president. But, um, I, I know I'd like to hear a little bit about the health care decision. Um, I spoke about it um, at the National Convention a bit with uh, my, my fellow Attorney General Sam Mullins from Georgia. But, but, you know, what, what people don't remember, and, and I can tell, first of all, let me tell you, we were all shocked by the opinion. Um, and I can tell you, every court in the country, you know, there are, there are a ton of these lawsuits going on all over the country, different ones. Not one single judge in the country, even the ones who ruled against us on the, um, on the Commerce Clause issue, you know, the ones that ruled against us and we prevailed on that, even the ones that ruled against us, not one single judge other than the U.S. Supreme Court in the entire country ruled that this was a tax. Um, so we found that very interesting. So no one anticipated, no one in the country anticipated um, this conclusion. But, but what we did went on, and, and this was very important, was the Medicaid expansion. That the government can't say, hey Florida, if you don't choose to participate in this, we are going to pull every single penny of your Medicaid funding. And that was very important, the coercion um, aspect. And that was really almost a case of first impression for the U.S. Supreme Court. So we were pleased that, that we prevailed on that issue. And we were pleased that we prevailed under the Commerce Clause, frankly. Because as you've probably heard me say 50 times, they can do that to us, they can do anything. Now, the only, only good thing about the court ruling it was a tax is that now we need to get Mitt elected, excuse Governor Romney elected, then after he's elected, instead of 60 votes in the Senate, all we need now is 51 to get rid of the tax. So that is why you have to vote for Connie Mack, because we can get Bill Nelson out of office, I'm telling you. positive commercial about him, but, but you've got to remind your friends and family to get out there because that's a seat that we can take and that's a seat that we need to get rid of Obamacare, of the Unaffordable Health Care Act. Is what I'm now calling. So that's very, very important. Very important. Um, and you know, nobody saw the curveball that Justice Roberts threw us, none of us. Um, and I really don't know what else to say about it. Um, I doubt I will never criticize a Supreme Court justice, um, no matter what. You won't even, you, you'll never hear me criticize Justice Kagan. I mean, I just won't. Because they're, they're the top, they're, the, they're our top, I, I'm, I'm an attorney, and they're our top, um, our top court, the entire land. And despite what we think, we have the best system in the world. And we want to keep it that way. So, so that's very, very important. But we tried the legal system and that didn't work in this case, but you know now we, we have a different way. 
And, and Ned has vowed, we've talked about it on numerous occasions, on day one, he is going to start that process of repealing the Unaffordable Health Care Act. So just get ready for that. Um, I, can, I can tell you too, um, my fellow attorneys general and I have um, on numerous occasions joined forces and we've sued the EPA. Um, here on the numeric nutrient criteria issue in Florida, it's a case specific to Florida regarding the water standards. Um, it just would have been completely unsustainable for our state. And, um, you know, the D DEP was on our side. And, you know, I've been traveling all over the country for, for Governor Romney, or really I've been to Virginia, I've been to New Hampshire. Um, this weekend, I don't know if I'm in the Midwest or New, uh, or New England, they haven't told me yet. <laughs> um, um, but everywhere I go, people have different issues with the EPA, whether it's coal, uh, whether it's natural gas and oil, Keystone Pipeline, um, you know, we've got to become energy independent. And that's something that this president is not allowing us to do. And as attorneys general, we will continue to fight the federal government every day until we're blue in the face. We will continue to do it, but the only way to stop it is to get that guy out of the White House. <laughs> here locally, um, meaning in the state of Florida, which um, of course is my home state, and that's, that's why I love being Attorney General, and no, I don't want to be Vice President. <laughs> I just want to be the best AG I can be, and that's it for me, so um, um, hopefully I'll be reelected. <laughs> I don't know, Greg may differ with that, my better half. <laughs> we, we've traveled a lot, it's, it's been crazy. It's um, it's really been surreal, and um, you know, you don't know how you do it, but you just keep doing it, and you keep working for what you what you believe in. And I think when you run for the right reasons, um, like everyone in this room, um, the right thing happens. And I never once prayed to win; I prayed for um, God to let the right thing happen, and just to make a difference for our state. And that's that's I think when you do that, you can accomplish um, accomplish quite a bit. So we, um, for six to seven years, they had tried to pass legislation regarding the oxycodone and the pill mill clinics. I won't talk a lot about that because I know you all know so much about it. And, um, but we were able now to pass. We have some of the toughest legislation in the entire country. Of the top 100 prescribers of oxycodone in the entire country, 98 of those doctors lived in Florida. We're down to 13, and that number's shrinking. Affected, but I, I know uh, we're cutting the number of um, we're cutting the number of, of pill mills, pain clinics drastically. I mean, almost in half, if not. But the numbers are just staggering. So it's great what what they're doing, and that's thanks to the governor's to strike force and everyone working together as a team. This wasn't me. I get credit for things. This this was a team effort. This was a great house, a great senate, a great governor, all working together to pass tough legislation. And that's the only way you're going to accomplish anything, is working together. And um, and this strike force, I mean, you know, we're doing drug take-back days, which are so important. Um, you know, realtors have told me now, and we knew that when we pass this tough law, these tough laws, that things were going to change. Um, listen to this, realtors have told me that people now come into open houses posing to be home buyers to raise the medicine cabinet. Of course, robberies have increased at pharmacies. Um, ER docs, I bet you, I know you're looking at me like, I know, can you believe that? I know, like things you don't even think of. ER doctors are telling me that, um, that that they're asking for increased security at hospitals in the middle of the night because addicts or, addicts or dealers or both are coming into um, the hospitals trying to get the medicine there because they can dispense at a hospital. So it's... Um, it's been challenging, but it's been rewarding. We're not there yet. We have a long way to go, but we're going to wipe those guys out. And we seriously are thinking about putting a billboard when you enter Florida that says, turn around, you're not going to get your drugs here. We're seriously thinking about it. So, and I've been working with Kentucky 
times, and um, my counterpart, Jack Conway, who's a Democrat there, this is a bipartisan effort, and um, because we were the Oxy Express, and we were an embarrassment to the country, frankly, we, and we should have been. And so we've, um, this isn't over, and, and, but we're working on it, we're working hard, and then just when you think you've got something under control, my phone rings, and it's a nurse from Tampa General Hospital, and she says, Pam, we have another problem with babies, and I had no idea. Um, at least, and these are very conservative, very conservative estimates, at least 20% of the babies going through the neonatal intensive care unit at St. Joseph's Hospital are born addicted to oxycodone. All children here in St. Pete, 30%. East, and then this isn't just Florida. East Tennessee Hospital in Knoxville, they did a snapshot on one day to see how many babies in their NICU um, were, were, were there because of drug addiction, 68%. So um, I met with Gil Kurlikowski um, in, in D.C., our, our national drug czar, and he even came down. So we formed this time um, with, the great help of our, our, with the help of our great legislature. We um, formed a task force to prevent this, to work on this with um, Representative Kelly Stargell, Senator Joe Negron, and we formed a task force to study this. Because I said to a neonatologist, I said, Doctor, we can't let this become the next crack baby epidemic, and he said, we've already surpassed it. I mean, these little babies, their, their incubators have to be covered in blankets. They're sensitive to light, to sound, to touch. Instead of milk, they're getting morphine or methadone. Um, it, it's, it's, it's unreal. And so they took me to St. Joe's right away. And once you see one of these babies, it changes your life. I mean, they don't cry, they shriek. And, um, but but, but, but we're, we have our task force. We've had two meetings. We have a third coming up. And again, it's everybody working together. We brought in all these agencies. You know, we brought in Department of Children and Families. The goal isn't to take these babies away from their moms. It's to educate these pregnant women so they don't do this junk when they're pregnant or any time. And a lot of women say that, you know, a lot of I started calling.